Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to take a look at a test conducted by Jaguar Land Rover to compare the per kilometer cost of running combustion engine cars compared to EVs in South Africa and see the real world differences in the costs to run the two different propulsion systems. We will be looking at the cost to fill up heavy traffic, highway and urban environment driving and the resulting consumption figures. Without further delay, let's begin. Jaguar Land Rover are convinced that EVs are cheaper to run per kilometer than petrol and diesel engine cars. And to prove this, they sent one of their senior driving instructors on a week-long expedition to measure and report the electricity consumption and cost per kilometer of a fully electric Jaguar I-Pace in a variety of real-world driving environments. The objective was to work out the costs of driving an I-Pace in the real world with results as close as possible to what actual customers would achieve on their own. No predetermined routes to benefit one power source over another, no laboratory test cycles, no nonsense. Though the costs to fill EV batteries and ICE fuel tanks from empty is mostly irrelevant to the rand per kilometer comparison, it's worth knowing that electric vehicles win this fight hands down as well. The cheapest and most convenient way to recharge an EV is at home. The iPACE has a 90 kilowatt hour battery with a usable capacity of 84.7 kilowatt hours that has a quoted 470 kilometers of range translating to around 400 kilometers in real life driving. Based on the current municipal rate of 2 rand 60 per kilowatt hour, to charge the iPACE's 90 kilowatt hour battery would cost around 230 rand. Whilst combustion engine cars have different fuel tank sizes, to fill up the tank on a family SUV would cost significantly more. Where combustion engine vehicles suffer in slow moving, stop start traffic, this environment is where EVs are at an advantage, say Jaguar Land Rover. Combustion engine cars will continue to burn fuel, whether they're moving or not. Where EVs will consume almost zero electricity at standstill or creeping in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. JLR's senior instructor, Andrew Blaine, stated that during his run with the iPACE, he deliberately spent his morning and evening commutes in as much traffic as possible. The iPACE's trip computer registered an average of 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. In heavy congestion, given current home electricity rates equates to around 57 cents per kilometer. It is worth noting that in slow moving traffic, EVs are not able to use regenerative braking to put juice back into the batteries and achieve its maximum range. Contrary to combustion engine vehicles, which are most efficient when cruising at low revs at high speed on motorways, EVs are least effective at steady speeds on the open road, states a Jaguar Land Rover. The energy an EV uses to cruise along at high, steady speeds varies greatly depending on the average speed. Andrew Blaine stated that on the highway, at 120 k's an hour, the I-Pace performed least efficiently. Prolonged periods on the throttle without regen braking resulted in an average electricity consumption of 24 kilowatts per 100 kilometers, which equates to a cost per kilometer of about 62 cents. Electric vehicles are most at home in environments with a mix of relatively high speeds and frequent braking such as along the main roads in South Africa's urban jungles or weekend drives to the countryside. The JLR test man stated that the I-PACE performed best in what you would consider average journeys for most drivers living in and commuting around South African metros. A balance of free-flowing roads with frequent robots such as William Nickel in Johannesburg and winding B roads outside of town on the way to Hartbeersport are ideal for EVs. He further stated that the trip computer in the iPACE reflected averages as low as 17 kilowatts per 100 Ks in these environments, translating to a cost of around only 44 cents 
per kilometer. It is important to note that motorists will experience a variety of different driving environments, roads and speeds. Therefore, the all-important figures to use as a base for comparisons between combustion engine vehicles and EVs are the fuel and electricity average consumption figures. Mr. Blaine stated that, apart from this week-long test period, he has racked up thousands of kilometers in the I-PACE and strongly believes that the average electricity consumption that majority of I-PACE customers will see is 22 kilowatts per 100 Ks resulting in a real-world cost of around 57 cents per kilometer. The cost per kilometer of petrol and diesel vehicles is ever-changing due to the volatile price of fuel in South Africa. There are also slight differences in fuel prices depending on where you live. But coastal costs are generally a bit cheaper, so in the interest of fairness, we will use the coastal rates to compare against EVs. At today's prices, a litre of unleaded 95 petrol is 24 rand 77 and a litre of 50 pp diesel is 23 rand 87 at coastal rates. To work out your current car's cost per kilometre, simply take the average fuel consumption in your trip computer in litres per 100 k's. Divide the figure by 100 and then multiply the results by the cost of fuel per litre. So there you have it. That was an overview of a rather important test that produced some very interesting results. EVs are notoriously expensive to purchase, but it seems like they are genuinely cheaper to run and will probably make up for their high purchase price in the long run. That is if you can religiously charge up at home. Otherwise, range anxiety will probably kill you before the petrol price does. As always, Thank you for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed this piece. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.